This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Midbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, This episode of uh, Vast Wasteland. It's the potpourri, uh, potpourri no, edition. It's the disco sucks edition. <laughs> well, that, that'll be the topic today. The, the disco thing, the whole disco thing that just kind of creeped up know, on us. <laughs> hitting mid mid to later 70s, and well, we'll talk about it. And but we'll first, blame the uh, right people. we'll um, say that this is Vast Wasteland. I guess we're going <laughs> to. We'll say it's what? Vast Wasteland. Thank you. <laughs> Vast Wasteland. <laughs> And we're on at least Wednesdays at 10 and Thursdays at 3. Something like that. <laughs> and if you don't see enough, write, write, complain. <laughs> Tell them you want more of Ass Wasteland. <laughs> Just like we used to have. Or but yes. anyway. <laughs> we're, anyway. It, but at least the, the Wednesday at 10 and Thursday at 3 there. And, <laughs> and, ignore um, that. Ignore that. If you want to write and ask what happened to the Tuesday at 6. <laughs> Which is a very good question. You write box 15, 14, 11, Columbus, Ohio. Four three two one five, and then tell us because we'd like to know too. Yeah, if you can find <laughs> the, the six o'clock show, let us know. Yes, well, what happened to it, or or why? Even? Or what? Or why? Well, before we before we jump into tonight's big topic, let's we've we've got a letter here. Shall I read it? Yes, read that letter, please. This is from perplexed 
action spy thriller comedy movie goer. Okay. Oh, that's confusing. Dear Vast Wasteland. The other day I was watching one of my all time favorite movies, Cannonball Run. Get a life. <laughs> and one of the mo one of the many? Many. Many stars, Roger Moore, was making a cameo as himself. And he was talking about that TV show he used to be in that is now in syndication. What in the world is the name of that TV show? Look, some punctuation, man. Well, first of all... What is the name of that show? Uh, Roger Moore was not playing Roger Moore. He was playing a person who believed that he was Roger Moore <laughs> in the show. He was a little Jewish guy. Anyway, the um, series that he was talking about, which was in syndication, which still is in syndication, that Roger Moore starred in back in the late... 60s or so was the saint. Uh, he played Simon Templar, who was the saint. <laughs> and well, there we have it there. And perplexed action spy thriller comedy movie goer, you need to study. <laughs> okay. So now on with the big uh, disco. Can we use the word? Phenom. Phenom? <laughs> <laughs> Phenom, oh, okay. Phenom and on. <laughs> well, it happened, and <laughs> how did it happen? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, back um, tell me when what. this whole first thing started, um, it was it was your late your late 70s there when Kiss was just done. They were really doing great there, and um, they were on this record label, Casablanca. They were actually the first the first group signed to this label, and the second person signed to the label was Donna Summer. Would that be Casablanca Records? Casablanca, yes. Records and film works? Yeah, well, it was just the records at first. They didn't well, do the film works until later when um, they started Summer? doing um, movies of, of um, groups performing, which kind of became, well, it later became known as videos, but. Oh, but I gotta explain something. This is a record, record. It's also a 45, 45. One song. A single. It's not as shiny as the CD, but it has music on it. And it okay. has a great big hole in the middle. And you put a and plastic thingy in it. It's black. <laughs> <laughs> it has grooves, which the needle... No, 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 no. How many grooves does a record have? Excuse me, it has one groove. It That's starts a trivia out here question. And it ends in here somewhere. One single groove. Don't be stupid. Records have a needle, which was on the arm, the tone arm of the record player, would fit into the groove and produced music when it was mo moved at the proper number of rotation. This is a 45. Record. Record. There were also larger records known as albums. But hey, something that the disco movement brought out, the disco single. Disco single. Which the is same size as an album. 33. 33 One and song. a third RPM. Revolutions per minute. <laughs> and this one is the Jackson. And what would that song be? Shake your body down to the ground. Ooh, the Jacksons. Okay, they have a flip side, which is that's what you get for being polite. I guess the Jacksons were trying to be nasty on this one. Hmm, the Jacksons. This is a disco single so that you can dance for about 10 minutes on the same song. Oh, God. And it made the wreck the. Um, that's what Quaaludes did to people. <laughs> it made the DJ's job a whole lot easier. <laughs> now you take these records and you scratch them. <laughs> and that's where. <laughs> <laughs> that's the start of a whole. Maybe disco begat hot because nobody wanted to listen to that crappy music anymore. <laughs> Basically. Actually, disco music was not terrible for the first two or three weeks. <laughs> yeah, and, and there were there were your performers who were big in the disco scene. I believe we, I, well, I did mention Donna Summer already. Donna Summer. <laughs> she did a lot of stuff. Wait, how about the nasty picture of Donna here? This is Donna when she really got into disco. <laughs> this, this is probably for the, the cover of that big song, Love to Love You Baby. Ooh, Love to Love You <laughs> Baby. I think that one lasted a full 20 minutes. And here's the Isley Brothers. They were a group that, like, 
Well, they started off back in the late 50s, early 60s, and they just rode the whole musical tide and came right into that disco thing with a bang. And here is Van McCoy, who was very famous and became popular for one song that kind of just took off with the whole disco thing. The Hustle. <laughs> I had a friend who thought it was Do the Hot Sauce. But, well, <laughs> we've all had trouble with music, That's haven't we? <laughs> anyway, this whole disco thing, by golly, I look at disco as being the, the great, um, oh, what, what would I call it? The, the, movement the, that, the movement that brought a lot of other things that had died out back, or at least tried to. Because, well, with disco, it kind of brought back the whole the whole Latin dance movement, which had kind of died down. But then disco came out, and all these Latin dance steps started coming back, like the hustle and, and the Latin hustle, and, and oh, I don't know what all. There were just all these different dance steps that were like Latin influence, and they just came back and got to be real popular because a lot of disco dancing was done with couples. <laughs> And, yeah, it, and, and close proximity, and they twirl them around and dip them and flip them, them on their and, heads and do all kinds of things. things like and then, well, see, along with the disco thing, they they just started start doing disco roller skating. And like I said, disco just brought back a lot of things that were either just kind of falling down or something, and they made them popular again. Disco roller skating, doing all these dance steps with roller skates on in the roller rink. <laughs> But you know what industry really boomed with disco? The polyester industry. The polyester and spandex it's, industry yeah, did very spandex, well. Too. Very, very, very well, well. <laughs> with the disco thing. Also, um, the idea of bringing along um, personal kind of like noisemaker items. Whistles. Whistles became very, very popular again during the disco era. Like you kids wear pacifiers around your neck, which is so cute now. We wore whistles. <laughs> Well, I didn't. I couldn't wear polyester. It made me itch. Well, see, there you are. I got left out of the whole disco thing because I couldn't wear polyester. Oh, and God. me, I didn't dance and still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll attest to that. He does not dance. He still don't. <laughs> but but disco, by golly, it just made a lot of things popular. Okay. And now, if oh, you could, no, no, no. If you could put the blame on one person for bringing the plague of disco. To the, to the front of the American people. Who would you blame? Who would you blame? Who would you blame? You would have to blame this man. Johnny Travolta. Johnny Revolta. Mm -hmm. He was a sweat hog. He started out as a sweat hog. He started out like dumb and cute, like men should be. And then he decided he could dance. And this was the look. The look. Notice flares, flare pants, white suit, black shirt. Black shirt. It's usually, well, open, open neck. And it was usually like a gold chain, at least one, if not several. Look at the moves this man can do. <laughs> hey, look, he jumps. Woo! Right <laughs> into the air. This person right here, his face should have been on a wanted poster, along with these guys. The, the Brother Give. Who also rode the musical tide from the 60s right up into the 70s and were at the real forefront of the whole disco phenom. Yeah, buddy, is it fair to say they wouldn't have a career if it wouldn't have been for disco? Yeah, and then I one, of them, one of them died, too. But well, well, none of these three. But, <laughs> but I do have the other one's album here. And Such hits as Stayin' Alive, Stayin' Alive, Ah, 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 Stayin' stayin alive. alive. Of course, they sung much higher than I can sing. And I'm a girl. <laughs> night fever, night fever. It must be the night fever. Of course, other great bands got, got in on this one. KC and the Sunshine Band. Get down tonight, get down tonight. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I like, like it, it. uh-huh, uh-huh. And what up, Tavares? Ooh, they're even on here. Ooh, ooh. The Brothers Tavares, notice. Hair. Afro hairdo. Afro hairdo. Ooh, large hair. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. I can see this come back without the polyester. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind at all. Great hits were on here. Ooh, jive talking. Jive talking. You're telling me lies. Jive talking. Jive talking. <laughs> 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 
More than a woman. More than a woman to me. That's scary. <laughs> Is that the song about the transvestite? Hey. <laughs> you should be dancing. Yeah. Yeah. You should be you dancing. You should be dancing. <laughs> Ooh, here's a good one. <laughs> Night on Disco Mountain, which was the disco version of the, the classical Night on Bald Mountain, yes. which made its big debut in old the Fantasia thing. But, well, there we are. Calypso Breakdown. Yes, here's another one of those wonderful Latin things that just went in straight into the disco thing. Why, here's another person that made a lot of the an impact Elliman. on the disco thing. Yvonne Elliman. Elliman. She was in that movie, Jesus Christ Superstar, wasn't she? <laughs> sort of, I think. I can't okay. remember. Now, back when they didn't say what this movie was about, and they were just um, advertising the Saturday Night Fever thing, they just had posters with Saturday Night Fever. I looked at this, and I said, whoa, look at that, lightning bolt, shiny letters, a science fiction movie! <laughs> Boy, was I disappointed. <laughs> it was a polyester movie. One of the better scenes in this movie, I did go see it with my friends because, well, we had to. We didn't have lives. We were 17. It was the first R-rated movie we could get into. It was the first R-rated. It's the only R-rated movie we could get into. But the best scene, John Travolta in his underwear. Little underwear. Screaming, Al Pacino. I didn't quite understand it, but hey. <laughs> Yeah, it was like an identity thing. Yeah, and yeah. And that's when he's getting ready to go to the and his disco. his grandmother's watching him. Of course, can we leave out the silvers? Oh, the, the silvers. silvers. The, the, I don't have a picture of the silvers, but let me tell you, they had hair. Twice as big! Her hair was twice as big! Her hair was twice as big! It was between the Jacksons and the silvers, but the silvers' hair moved like this. Yes, if they did this, their hair would touch the ground. They could fall over doing this. They could this. fly with their hair. <laughs> but they were a family, right? It was, a, it was a family thing. Boogie fever got to boogie down. Okay, one of, now, now this was one of my favorites. I don't know why. No, it was this one. Alicia Bridges, who was a woman DJ. Okay. This was like her one, one hit. And it, it was a weird song. I love the nightlife. I got to boogie. Keywords in disco. Got to boogie. On the disco round. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Gloria Gaynor, I will survive. She didn't. <laughs> and where is she now? Kid. Poor, Gloria, poor Gloria. Write us a letter. <laughs> Your song said, I will survive. You didn't have a money back guarantee. Good. <laughs> the thing I, the thing that happened though quite soon with disco was the idea that a lot of people decided we're gonna make fun of it <laughs> high on no, that no, list this was not funny this was serious well this okay was educational disco in the educational sense <laughs> now and you know who did this one okay you see the brothers gib well, this was Little Brother Gibbs' album. <laughs> this was Andy's contribution. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And, no, it's Robin Gibb. Wait a minute. Andy. Okay. Andy, this was Robin's contribution okay, solo. Okay, Robin was on there, yeah. Well, Robin is one of these He's three, one of though. these guys. He's one of the twins. Guess okay. who the twins are? I, they never really look like but twins But for those today. of you who, like, watch Barney now... Whoever Barney is. He's a big headed dinosaur. This is Sesame Street <laughs> fever. And look Let's at see? look look at little Grover. Look at him jump. Ooh, he can do the same things that John Travolta was doing. Yes, he can. <laughs> this is Sesame Street fever. With the great hit by Robin Gibb, trash. <laughs> he probably was at the time. Trashed. And boy, the golly. Disco Rubber Ducky is also on here, the disco version of Rubber Ducky, and C is for Cookie. That's good enough for me. Of course, later on Sesame Street, they went ahead and did this great single, I Left My Cookie at the Disco. Oh, no. <laughs> Say it, it ain't so. <laughs> but this wasn't really comedy. This was serious. This was education. But it, it's still a parody of the whole disco <laughs> era. Which several... Um, DJs at their several stations decided to take it upon themselves to do further parodies of the disco era with 
Disco Disco Destruction. Disco Duck. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. Um, Disco Duck. Rick D. Rick D. Who was Rick a DJ? <laughs> he did several. Um, Disco Duck. Um, let me see. He did a he did a parody of um, Rod Stewart's "If You Think I'm Sexy" or "Do You Think I'm Sexy?" Well, and, at the uh, time, yeah. Now this was a sad thing because like people like Rod Stewart who'd like who'd like had roots in like folk music and rock music and. Well, Rod made a serious error here. He, he, he did this real tragic thing. He decided to be like disco. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, there he is. This is Rod Stewart, like, during his disco days. Right here next to Donna Summer during her disco days. Poor Rod. Just above the Bee Gees during their disco days. Their only days. <laughs> Oh well, no! Now the Bee Gees well, the were real big in, in the pop. '60s and yeah. doing pop, and but I think they're really like. Then they got into the discos and started doing coke. And, no, 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 oh, sorry. No. <laughs> anyway, well, that disco era. <laughs> Maybe they had Pepsi instead. <laughs> they could have. Yeah, they could have. Could, could have, have had Dr Pepper. Yeah. Well, they're from Australia. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? Be a pepper, drink, like... Anyway, we can't say that. That's a, that's, a, that's a commercial. So, um, the disco era. Um, <laughs> disco destruction. You I, had that up here? Yes. Um, which, which station well, is well, it around? Well, QFM. John Fisher, in fact. John Fisher? <laughs> yeah, he had fun with that. They, what they would do was they would basically play a disco song, and uh, they'd let it get, oh, maybe about... 30 seconds into it, and then you'd hear the ah! screeches of the record being turns, yanked off the turntable, and they'd throw it and oh, <coughs> they'd no. blow it up. <laughs> I was from Cincinnati area. WEBN did that, but they, they just actually put the record on, let it play for like a revolution, a revolution or so, just around it, and then they like actually put the firecracker on the record and blow it up uh, off of the turntable. They could afford it, I guess, but that it, that sounds interesting over the radio. Why? Something they should go back to doing. I, I'll give them a list. Uh, start with Guns and Roses. <laughs> <laughs> and well, the whole the whole disco era. Um, well, it. What what movies were there? There was well, of course, that Saturday Night Fever. And there was the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. Uh, well, Staying Alive wasn't really about disco necessarily. It was more of a dance thing. See, somehow, with this whole Saturday Night Fever thing, somebody got the idea that any any dance thing that John Travolta did kind of should become what everybody should do. Because after that, there was that urban cowboy thing, and we. But do you know why that movie didn't make it? I swear I read this. Urban Cowboy didn't make it because the audience that it was aimed at, these, what, 17 to 25, did not know what the word urban meant, thought it, it meant something like gay, and were so homophobic they didn't go to the movie. Well, now that's... That, that, that's one thing I read when that was out. That may well be true, but I know that it seemed to have an impact around the central Ohio area because there became there were several the western bars with mechanical bulls. And There's it was still like, one in town with a mechanical bull, Well, that, they probably still have it. Move on, Columbus. <laughs> it, it just kind of hit here and hit home or something because people just love that idea, and it was because of that movie. And then... um. Well, what what was? Didn't even no, like when, an aerobic size movie with somebody. Was Grease out before the Saturday Night Fever thing? No. Or, or after that? After. Well, Grease was after. Was it after the Urban Cowboy thing? No, it was before or, Urban was Cowboy. The, well, when the Grease thing came out too, it was like you got your Saturday Night Fever. There's disco. Boom. John Travolta did it. Well, I guess everybody's got to. Grease came out. It was about the fifties. Boom. A fifties, late late fifties, early sixties. It was an early sixty movie. I think. It was like boom. Fifty nine, sixty. They Nostalgia. John Travolta did it, everybody's going to do it. The Urban Cowboys say, boom! John Travolta did it, everybody's going to do it. Then the, the um, well, Staying Alive was more like, well, that was after um, Flashdance, which kind of brought street dancing and But it wasn't as into. severe as sickening as disco. And, and it, it was like, John Travolta did it, and then Staying Alive, well, I guess everybody's got, but he was kind of trying to catch up because um, Jennifer Beale had already. Anyway, disco. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> It kind of just, it, it, it melded its way into, into um, what? I, 
I, I stayed away from it. I just don't know really Somebody what it... Somebody estimated me. It, it kind of <laughs> made discotheques, which were big in the 60s, it kind of made them popular again because they were kind of a flagging thing too, and, and disco kind of made them popular again. And all the flashing lights, the floor, the lighted floors. The only place you could go in and get served high when you were actually low, which maybe we should explain high and low. Because back in these days, if you were 18 or between 18 and 21, you could go low, which means you could buy 3-2 beer, which they have now put in bottles and they call it light. <laughs> <laughs> like they had all this 3-2 beer left over when they decided not to have that anymore. Had to do something with it. Boom, light yeah, beer. Yeah, y'all thinking diet food. <laughs> but if you were 21, you could drink... Colders. <laughs> If you were 21, you could drink absolutely anything, including the fire extinguisher on the wall. Mm. So if you were, like, under 21, you could go in with somebody who was over 21, and they could buy your drinks, and you could just pretty much sit there in the pretty lights and get drunk. <laughs> Especially if you didn't dance or wear polyester or shoes that were this high. That's right. The disco fashions were really what kind of made the whole thing go. Lots of shiny, shiny clothes, Shiny, meltable clothes, shiny accessories, and shoes that were this big, this darn big, <laughs> six inch heels. And you had to dance in them. God, what and we keep thinking? your balance. And keep your balance. Your <laughs> shoes, they were twice as big. The shoes, the heels, the soles were twice as big. <laughs> you were talking about your friend thought it was do the hot sauce? Yeah. A friend of mine was at a disco. She was like a dancing type person. And she's dancing, and a guy came up to her and said, Shake your propane, shake your propane, baby. <laughs> the song was Shake Your Groove Thing. <laughs> she got out her bick and shook it at him and said, Go away. <laughs> shake your propane. Do the hot sauce. <laughs> Taco Bell could pick that up. Do the hot sauce. <laughs> I believe in Malcolm, you sexy thing, you <laughs> sexy, sexy thing, thing you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was another one that a friend of mine came up with. Words for disco. By golly. <laughs> <laughs> you sexy thing, boogie down, shake your fill in the blank. <laughs> which, which went into tear the roof off the sucker. <laughs> Burn the, the mother, mother down. down. <laughs> Still used today in some songs. <laughs> What other groups just had a just had a life on disco? Blondie pretty much just had her career around disco. Yeah, she Deborah tried. Harry started off um, kind of in, in the in the New York um, kind of almost in the the alternative scene, and then she what went what was hip hop then into into the disco scene, and by golly, where is Deborah Harry now? Showing up in science fiction movies, playing wicked people. And then you've got your. Um, well, the, the the locker dance steps, which kind of went into disco thing there. Tony Basil, Shabadoo, mm -hmm. people like this. They they really got to be popular during the disco thing, and they went on further with um. They uh, evolved. Yes, in into the. They got um, out of the polyester. <laughs> into the uh, the hip hop thing when after Flashdance came out, they went and did a couple movies, you know, with. Well, well I can't remember what they were called anyway. And the dance show, Dance Fever. Dance Fever, the Danny Terrio. Yeah, and either one that Merv Griffin was hot for us, so they say we don't yeah, know we weren't there. we just going by the rumors. That's kind of what happened there, which, which kind of evolved from American Bandstand and Soul Train, even though they tried to do their own things with that, too. That Dance Fever well, was, was a really competition. kind of the big one. So, we can get um, out here in the most sparkly polyester and biggest shoes and dance and not fall on their butts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the frilliest dress that would just fly up and show their frilly underthingers. <laughs> you were looking, huh? <laughs> well, you couldn't help it. Dresses were just flying up every day. Spin them around. There goes the dress. So, disco. We're so glad it's gone. <laughs> certainly, certainly are. <laughs> you can revive the 60s. You can even revive the 50s. But please, God, don't revive the disco. <laughs> and that, that whole thing about the, the 70s preservation thing, talk about, I love these disco songs. Well, I <laughs> hope they buy them all. Because <laughs> <laughs> and burn them. <laughs> it's just sad. It's just sad. <laughs> It's sad to think. Some people just grew up on this disco thing and think it was the most wonderful thing in the world. Well, anyway. Mark's giving us the fist. <laughs> I guess it's time to ski-daddle out Ooh. of here. So. What's next time? All next time it'll be all three of us again and we'll be doing something off of TV or something like well, that. Well, that's, that's, that's the rumor. Until then.
Uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, we sorry, got a damn good day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.